Okay, everybody, so we are back. Uh, we did better than we thought <laughs> and got back a couple minutes early, so hopefully you're all tuned in. Um, so as I said, I'm now really happy to uh, to bring a presentation from Kevin McDermott, who is the Vice President of Market Access for Summit Therapeutics, and he is going to be talking to us about um, the power of a collective and clear voice to Medicare. So Kevin, uh, please take it away. All right, thanks, Christian. And uh, this has been a terrific week. You've done pulling together a, a really dynamic uh, set of topics and, and you know getting through the technology. And so we really appreciate you you pushing forward on this because I think it's been very meaningful for all of us. Uh, and it is very rewarding time to be among so many brilliant people all pulling in the same direction, which is uh, this is the first summit I was actually able to attend and I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to, to do so. So in purpose of today, I am with Summit and we are a publicly traded company. So we just need to make sure we have a disclosure up front. Uh, but really for today, our objectives are to give you a little bit of an information about Summit, but also, and most importantly, follow up to what, a, what it was a great, great timing of having Kyle go first to give everybody an understanding of what goes on at the macro level around the budget process. And I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into the centers of Medicare and Medicaid and specifically what you can do uh, in terms of why it matters. Uh, as Christian said before the break, even though you may not be in the program, you are a taxpayer. And as a result, you have a voice. You also have a very important voice in C. difficile, and that needs to be heard because Medicare, as you'll see, is very important, not only to the, the, the health and well-being of the United States, uh, but for specifically the, the C. diff population as well. Uh, and as we start, I really wanna call out that probably each of us has had a pivotal event in our careers. And, and we at Summit uh, collectively had such an event just recently. And uh, we here are all pulling for the C. diff patient. And we've actually now had the opportunity to have a new CEO join us who is uh, had, has a long history of the betterment of mankind, specifically around patient-friendly solutions. And that's Bob Duggan, who joined us as CEO last week. And I just wanted to call that out because it's important to see who's joining the fight. Uh, for antibiotics, the appropriate antibiotics. We've heard a lot of things about what bad things antibiotics can do, uh, but there's a lot of good things that antibiotics can do, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. But that our, our new CEO started off in patient-friendly solutions in, in, in robotic surgery. He continued that in terms of his, his work at uh, Pharmacyclics and Abrubica and bringing what many considered couldn't happen, and that was patient-friendly uh, ideas to, to oncology. But he recently joined us and brings to it the fact that, you know, we've got to really make sure that we're upping our game within the, the antibiotic industry. No more in, uh, in non-inferiority studies. We really have to make sure that we're looking for better and truly innovative solutions. We've got to make sure that in C. diff, the selective targeting of the bacteria is, is certainly important and that the recurrence, uh, re reduction of recurrence is really what we should be shooting for overall. And that really infectious disease patients need durable cures. Uh, cures are, are what we need, and that's what antibiotics can deliver many days and, and, and many times. C. diff has, has some challenges associated with it, as we've heard throughout this week. But we need to make sure that all the care, all of the stakeholders in this uh, equation get what they need. You know, caregivers in search of and need of durable cures, the payers, uh, that's the area that I, I work in, uh, make sure that they've got cost-effective medicinal drugs. And, and really what we want to make sure that everyone knows today that we're pulling for you here at Summit and we believe that we have the potential to play a very meaningful role in, uh, in this increasingly patient-friendly approach uh, towards anti-infective drug therapy. So we do have a product in phase three development. Uh, Ritonidazole is designed to be patient-friendly. Uh, it is specifically targeted to C. difficile. So we want to get in, uh, get rid of C. diff, and, uh, and move on. And one of the important things that new drugs have to do is to make sure that it uh, does not have a negative impact on the microbiome. And you heard a lot about that this week. Uh, the microbiome is, is very important, whether it's in the, uh, the dental side of things or in the gut, we gotta make sure that uh, we're protecting it as part of the healing process. So that it is uh, very specific in the gut and lessens the risk of, of any off-target off effects. We initiated a trial um, a little over a year ago. And one of the reasons that you join a company like Summit is to make sure that you're, you're really advancing the science and you're advancing, again, a patient-friendly approach. And so backing up what we say in terms of going after the, the true, truly innovative approaches is the fact that we are designed as a superiority trial. That's very important to make sure that we're showing that we're better than the standard of care. 
Um, when we deal with the government, as Kyle gave that overview, you've got to be able to demonstrate that there's an economic impact of your new technology and what it does. And so we have included uh, significant economic data in our trial. And as I mentioned already, but can't uh, mention too many times, is the impact on the microbiome. This is where I think the, the bar needs to be set going forward for any new technology coming in in the antibiotic space, making sure that we're addressing the microbiome and minimizing any negative impact. And I have to call out our uh, clinical development as well as our medical and regulatory team, uh, because even through what we're all going through right now, they have been able to continue enrollment and helping to make this product get to market as soon as possible. So thanks to them and their efforts. All right, so what's my world? I, I deal with the, the market access side of things. And in a pharmaceutical company, that's, that's dealing with insurance companies, it's dealing with large organized systems of care, and the government for that matter. And really today, I'd like to at least show and, and, and kind of share with you why I believe um, that my world is also uh, and should be part of your world. And, and though I'm speaking specifically to the advocates, but, but really even all the other companies that are that are involved with or, or, or sponsoring this event. I think collectively around C. diff, we should have the opportunity to really push things forward. In regards to the specifics of Medicare, uh, I hope you'll know by the end of uh, the conversation today that Medicare matters uh, and that our voice really needs to be louder. So what is Medicare? Medicare is uh, nearly 55 years old actually and, and still rolling. Uh, there are four different parts, uh, part A, the hospital, B, the physician services. What we'll talk about today is some collective work that we did in terms of bringing public comments to the Medicare organization around part C, which is the Medicare Advantage program, and part D, which is the drug program. What's important to know, and, and Kyle mentioned this again from, uh, from his presentation, is that uh, who qualifies for Medicare is typically the elderly as well as the disabled. I think there's some, uh, if they're not there, maybe they'll be up uh, in a little bit. There's some uh, interesting uh, polling relative to where are things uh, in terms of the history of Medicare. Uh, but it did, it was uh, begun in the, in the 60s and it actually is arguably probably one of the more successful programs uh, that the government has run uh, over, the, over the last uh, 50 years. So a little bit of an overview. You, you heard that it was uh, about 50%, a little over 50% of the president's budget. But when you take a look at the impact that Medicare has, uh, it's over 60 million people across the United States. Uh, that's, that's a significant amount of, of impact. The second most important thing is uh, that 50% of the president's budget translates into 15% of the overall federal budget. So it's equal to defense in terms of how much money we spend in the program. And as a result, there needs to make sure that there's a, a regular process for feedback on, uh, on, on how the program is going and is it delivering on, on that kind of uh, level of investment. So a little, little fun while we're uh, going along the way in a game called Factor Crap. Uh, the Medicare population in, in California alone would be the 16th largest state. Is that, is that true or false? And as you think about that, it is actually true. Uh, it would be right behind Massachusetts in terms of the, the, the total population. A little over 6 million uh, Medicare recipients, beneficiaries in California alone, which goes to show you that at a state level, but also even at a federal level, uh, the Medicare population certainly has, has a powerful voice, uh, and Medicare is a very uh, important program for a number of Americans. So Medicare matters, and our voice really needs to be louder. C. difficile is, is very, very common in the elderly. Uh, we've heard that throughout this week as well. Medicare is the biggest payer in the elderly. In fact, 66% of C. difficile occurs in patients over 65 years old. That means that Medicare has a lot to say about what the overall care of these patients is. And one in program in particular that we're gonna talk about is Medicare Part C. Medicare, Medicare Part C about a little over a third of the of these patients um, in the United States enroll in Medicare Part C, and that's an elective. Uh, they actually raise their hand and say, you know what, I wanna go into this particular insurance program. Uh, that insurance program is a lot like if you work for a large corporation or, or, or have insurance uh, through a company. And that is that it's a holistic approach. It ha handles not only your, uh, your medical expense, your hospital expense, your physician expense, but it also has 
uh, drug management within it. So it's the total benefits that are available through Medicare in a, in a one-stop shop. Now, why that's important is, is because that, in my mind, is the best place for a C. difficile patient who we never want them to get C. diff, but if they do, that, that's one of the better environments for them to get it from an insurance standpoint, because the insurance company that's being asked to manage the health of that patient over the course of a year really has to think through uh, of the total outcome that they're delivering for the patient. The insurance company gets a fixed amount of money. It's a, a set premium each year, and they've got to manage all of that care uh, within the 12 month period. So they're looking for and should be thinking about uh, the holistic outcome. And, and that's why it's important that we thought that we should comment to CMS that the needs of the CDA patient uh, need to be put into uh, to a higher level of, of concentration. In terms of uh, the public, public commentary, you saw some timelines from, uh, from, from uh, Kyle as it related to the, the overall budget, somewhat similar to what we see in Medicare as it relates to the timing each year where input is made. Uh, we were expecting to get input in in the, uh, the March timeframe. We got a little bit of a break on that. Uh, and, but in April, we actually participated. When I say we, I'll, I'll share that, who that is in just a minute. But this annual event is an opportunity for everyone. Uh, to either go online or write a letter to uh, to the folks at CMS about a particular set of rules that they're willing they're looking to do uh, to either add, add to or take away from the program, but it also is your opportunity to say what do you think the program should be that it's not addressing. So that starts the conversation in many cases about what the program should be thinking about over time. Again, anyone can join in whether you're in the program or not. Uh, because uh, it, it is a, a federal program. And it really is more than idle, an, an idle gesture. It really is important to get your word out there uh, because uh, many times that kind of enthusiasm towards issue translates into policy within the program. So we are on the map. Um, I'd have to say that with the, the collective effort, the 1%, if you will, uh, got a lot of good, good thoughts into the, uh, the CMS process for Medicare Advantage and Medicare Part D. Uh, and so thanks for everyone that did participate. But there were 661 total comments posted. So not a lot when you take a look at some other programs and, and some, some level of participation. So you can see with a concerted effort on our part as CDIP advocates uh, that we will be able to raise the voice and actually be heard. And it's important because the people who actually read these comments and look through things, they're looking for things that that are unique and, and different. And I think, you know, C. diff will stand out even with the 1% about some specific needs that the program needs to address. In regards to uh, Medicare Advantage and Part D, who did a good job in, uh, in this current comment? Of the 661, the pain community. The pain community did a tremendous job in mobilizing and it, it was a cross-functional uh, uh, approach. What I've highlighted here, a lot of the, the patient comments and that is that they were telling a very real story about that they're not opioid addicts, they're not drug addicts on the street. They're actually, you know, people who really need the benefit designed to support them as it relates to their ongoing chronic condition of pain. And so some of the comments are highlighted here, but I think it's a good example of how we can, how we can organize as, an, uh, as a group as well to make sure that we, we think of the, the totality of the patient and, uh, and what within the rulemaking process within the, 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 the Medicare Advantage or, drug, or Part D program, the drug program, might be getting in the way of those outcomes that we're all hoping to get on behalf of the patient. So thanks to uh, my teammate, Michelle Avery, who, uh, who has existing relationships with both C. diff and, and Christian at, at Peggy Lillis. Uh, we came together and, and thought that there's really four items that needed to be brought to the attention of the CMS leadership as it relates to the C. diff population. And that is around affordability, uh, the unique needs of care that, uh, that, that patients have in terms of the isolation and the dietary, as well as quality and outcomes. You know, th these two are very important because this is Medicare Advantage. There are a number of different scorecards that these programs, as well as the Part D programs, the drug programs, they have to be evaluated in terms of they're getting all this money. Are they bringing lower cost and higher quality uh, to the Medicare program? And so we, we really wanted to call out the fact that C. diff deserves quality initiatives uh, more than just what the hospitals are, are kind of on the hook for. And so we had commentaries about that. Uh, specifically, uh, as I started and, and, and as you'll see throughout, we really have to make sure that there is a patient friendly Medicare CDI solution. And certainly the comment period allows that to happen. 
The four items, if you want to look a little more detail, is that the urgent threat, uh, CDC urgent threat report, which you heard from Cliff on Monday, uh, that we're asking that QIDP therapeutics should have a zero copay. You know, why would we want a patient who's facing and staring down an infectious disease to have, have to make the decision as to whether or not they start their antibiotic? We, we've heard about stopping their antibiotic earlier or whatever, but we want to make sure people start it. And, and there's evidence to show that a significant amount of patients just can't afford their antibiotic. And as I argue with, with folks, and nothing against hypertension or high blood pressure or high cholesterol, but if you have that and you decide to not take your medication, you're affecting yourself and, and probably your family in some way. But if you don't take your antibiotic, you are potentially affecting society. And that's no more true than, than it is within the, the CDF situation. We also called out that CDF beneficiaries require special services. And again, these quality measures and that, that CDI is not just a 10-day event. So it really should be looked at over time. And we heard that, I think, in the excellent presentation yesterday about the quality of life data to say that C. diff doesn't go away after 10 days. It really stays with patients and, uh, and, and it really br brings up a level of anxiety and fear of having to ever have go through that situation again. So making sure that these patients uh, that, that, that had C. diff, their long-term uh, benefit and, and welfare are looked out for by the Medicare Advantage and Part D programs. So specifically in terms of supplemental benefits, so there's a program within Medicare Advantage that you can say, look, here's a special population the chronically ill population. And, and we argued uh, in, in terms of our, our document that we sent in that, that C. diff really is a chronic condition uh, because of recurrence and, and patients who, even if they have it once, they never want to have it again, that anxiety stays with you. Um, so we want to make sure that the, the care process that, that's important to the outcome uh, was, was really covered. And there are gaps. There are, you know, the, there are things that need to be addressed within the policy that could be improved, such as making sure that all the diagnostics are fully funded within the program and that people are educated on, on the importance of using the right diagnostics, making sure that the, there's medical and personal supplies that are covered. You hear many times Medicare Advantage uh, uh, health plans, you know, pay for uh, homes to be remodeled after a total hip replacement so that there's a better outcome and less risk of falling, as an example. So these are the same things that we thought that they should be setting aside and making sure that patients at home who are suffering with C. diff uh, would have the support services that they need, uh, especially now with many patients not being able to get into a, a, a typical hospital setting. So overall home care was, was important, as well as the, the non-healthcare uh, you know, related things, such as the, the holistic aspect of food, produce, and supplements to get patients back on their feet and get that microbiome uh, back into a, a, a good state. We also asked for some traditional things that they use in the chronic disease space, uh, be developed for C. diff, and that's more education and more programming. So education is important. Uh, patients who get it, many Medicare Advantage programs have comprehensive educational services that help patients. Uh, we think that the Medicare Advantage plan should build one for, for C. diff specifically. And that, you know, a new, unique dynamic over that short period of time that the infection is present is the fact that there's care transitions. Many patients are in, uh, in the hospital, going out of the hospital, at home, going into the hospital, you know, Medicare Advantage, as I said, should be on the hook for all of the quality of care that goes on in that process. And so more care transition programming and more attention to C. diff and their case management services is important. As I said, we told Medicare that C. diff is a chronic illness and that it really does fit, if you read through this, that the, the, the definition that the Chronic Care Act puts forward in terms of what Medicare needs to do differently uh, for those that, that, that are in uh, a chronic kind of a, a condition. So we'll continue to argue this because those supplemental services we think uh, will be important for, for the patients in, in the overall Medicare community. So repeat after me, Medicare is matters and, and our voice will be louder. I think the, the key point that I'd, I'd like to say is that as, as Kyle brought up uh, some guidance as you begin to talk to either your district representatives or, or, or you know, your, your Washington offices. Um, CMS is, a, is an agency underneath uh, the president's and the Health and Human Services under the, the administration. Um, but they, they need to make sure that there, there are other areas of, uh, of, of the administration and other agencies get support too. One of the most important things is incentivizing the development of new antibiotics. We're trying to do our part here and answer the call of, of what's needed in C. diff in terms of a superior product brought to the market that doesn't have an impact on the microbiome. 
we want to make sure that there are other products uh, in other disease states too uh, that are brought forward. So it's been a tough market. It's one of the nice things about having uh, our new CEO is bringing that knowledge into an area that needs to, to, to really revitalize here in the United States, but the government can play a part in that. And so we'll ask that, that, that you've mentioned that, uh, that it's a very important part of how we go forward. Any new antibiotics that can help not only with C. diff, but also with, uh, with the other infections that we're, we're battling. And we do believe, and this is where Christian and I uh, align a lot, and that is the fact that the CDC needs more money. Um, it needs to come up with innovative C. diff education. Uh, sites of care are changing. We, we saw that in the data. There's more community activity. You know, can't just rely on hospitals being well-educated. We've got to make sure that communities are well-educated about it. And, um, and CDC can be a good source of that funding. Um, but I also think that they need to turn to more innovative areas. And, uh, and that's what we'll be advocating for going forward. And then finally, in terms of the C. difficile patient in Medicare, they shouldn't have to pay a copay. It's an urgent threat. Uh, and that was outlined. So it's in, in the report late last year. Why would we want here in America to have someone decide whether or not they take their antibiotic? Because again, they're chronically ill. Uh, most of them are Medicare. We know that they're in a, in a, in a defined income kind of a situation. These are the, 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 the last people we would expect in our society uh, to have to make that kind of a decision on an affordability standpoint, especially because of the, the high level of transmission that, uh, that is associated with, with, with the infection that we're talking about this week. So coming soon, um, there will be support coming for, uh, we're going to work with, uh, with Christian to give him some ideas, and I'm sure he'll follow up uh, for your upcoming Hill Press conversations. And uh, any C. diff specific talking points for the next Medicare comment period. Right now, uh, CMS is looking for input on how hospital care is going. And then at the same time, they're also looking for feedback for skilled nursing facilities, which is a, a big part of the Medicare program too. So we'll be sharing some ideas. And if you feel so um, engaged and excited about you know, taking on uh, and, and trying to improve the overall care management for, for our elderly patients, we'd ask that you take action with some of this information real soon. So with that, Medicare matters, and I do believe that your voice will be heard. So thank you to everyone, and uh, happy to answer any questions, Christian. Hey, Kevin, that was great. If you wanna turn your camera on, let everybody see your handsome mug. Uh, I doubt yeah. that. <laughs> It's funny. I those of you those of that work with me sometimes I have to escape to a uh, I call it my my Chevy escape pod. But today <laughs> I'm able to to join you from my home. <laughs> um. So I so something that I would like to mention uh, is that um, a couple of uh, two summers ago there was a proposal um, from Medicare from CMS from Medicare Medicaid um, for them to phase out a reporting of C. diff and some other healthcare associated infections. Um, the argument was that they were duplicative measures and yada, 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 but um, we did not um, trust <laughs> that the other measures would not eventually be removed. Um, right. So while Leapfrog, uh, the Leapfrog group was kind of the point organization raising this, um, we rallied um, over 300 comments um, from the people who, you know, who, who, you know, are part of our sort of larger network. Um, and ultimately we did, you know, we were able to successfully keep them from eliminating those, those reporting requirements. Um, so, you know, this is just another example of what can be done if people rally. Um, there was another one, uh, this was not the government, but um, for those of you who watched the, the session on dentistry yesterday, you know, when they were looking for public comment on changing their guidelines to sort of lessen the amount of antibiotic prescribing that happens in dentistry, we again, I mean, I don't think it was 300, but we had many people who wrote to the American Dental Association and said like, hey, you know, I got C. diff after a uh, dental treatment and an antibiotic. Um, and, you know, again, they took that into account and those guidelines did get changed and overall, you know, over time those should reshape how dentistry happens. Um, so, you know, I think people should, you know, really take this to heart. And I said it during, um, during Kyle's presentation that, 
you know, if you're afraid that the government isn't responsive to you, well, not <laughs> not contacting the government is the surest way to make sure they're not going to be responsive to you. Um, so, guys, we do have a couple minutes left if you have any questions before we go into our breakout sessions. If you have some for, for Kevin, uh, hit us up now. I'll just respond to your comment there about that. That's great that you had that kind of response. And I, I think what's important and why advan Medicare Advantage was important is that we hear so many times that people aren't thinking past what's right in front of them from the healthcare sector. Medicare itself has what's called fee for service, which is still the dominant program. And people don't think other than the next two to three days. Uh, and they don't think about the consequence of what they're doing uh, for the patient because they're not accountable for it. And so that's why you know, your voice is really important because uh, what's encouraging is that Medicare Advantage is getting bigger. Uh, many people really, really like it. It's like I said, over over a third of the elderly are in it uh, and it's growing. And in some of your markets, it's approaching 50 percent. So it's important that, you know, that kind of thinking becomes the standard in Medicare. And uh, and CDF is a great example of where you've got to be thinking more than just, you know, the two or three days in the hospital. What happens after that? You know, that's where we're supplemental benefits can really be helpful. And I think, you know, a lot of healthcare, uh, I mean, this is one of the things where like, you know, there's an over, there's a lot of complexity in the system. And so I don't think that necessarily people realize that, you know, this like sort of regulation of your hospital happens at the state level, right? Um, a lot of those things are state laws, but <clears throat> the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, because Medicare and Medicaid send so much money into the system, when they make a policy, right? So even if you pass this thing through Medicare Advantage, usually the insurance companies will follow suit, right? So if you get Medicare, uh, you know, and then Medicaid, hopefully, to not have a copay for a seed of treatment or to expand what they consider a first line treatment, that can have that can then impact the other insurance companies who feel like, oh, well, Medicare is doing it, we have to do it too. Right. Um, so it can have real downstream effects that I think that people don't necessarily um, appreciate. Um, so I I don't know if people went to grab some lunch, but we don't have <laughs> Maybe you were oh, just, just you and me, Christian. <laughs> um, oh. We do have one here. Uh, is there a website to submit comments to CMS about CDF? Is there a deadline of April 29th? I might have missed it. Oh, sorry to hear about your neighbor there, William. Um, the, uh, th there's an open comment on, on the uh, hospital as well as the skilled nursing facility. And once you have those comments together, you can go to regulations.gov and, and look for those programs. I think that's what we should do uh, You know, before the end of the week, Christian, is just get that information out as to where people can go. And this, because there's a lot, I mean, it's a, it's a regulations.gov is for all the programs, not just Medicare. So it may, it's not the easiest to navigate. We'll get you the specific links about where you need to go and put your comments in. Yeah, Thanks, definitely check your email. I mean, I think we'll probably try to get um, an email about how to do it and also some suggested talking points to everybody by the end of the week. So you'll have a couple of days over the weekend yeah. to draft something and send it through. So I see the, I see the comment on the innovation center uh, or demonstration project. We kind of asked for that. I, I'm not aware of one. And again, if there has been one, uh, help me understand that. Uh, but that's the, the center for innovation is, is where we would like to see some of this activity, including, a, you know, more efforts on a national collaborative and best practice sharing, especially around advantage. Because there's got to be some good stuff going on out there, right? That patients are getting some really good care innovation is going on and we've got to make that the standard and that that's really what the effort should be but um it's a great question and we'll follow up on that it is a great question um i'm not surprised that's a member of our scientific advisor council <laughs> well kevin i have to jump to my next session um so thank you, thank for, you for, for all your doing christian we look forward to working with you on on making this this change for our um for our community we really appreciate your incentive support you got it. Thank you. All right. Take care, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.